Hello, hello, and welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today's uh, Bible study will be coming from uh, 2 Corinthians. We are in chapter 2 because we have started the 2 Corinthians for the month of December as we have begun with 1 Corinthians at the beginning of December. We're going to take it all the way through and just go over everything that Paul edified the saints of God in uh, Corinth with, okay, all of the information that he gave to them, the reference to the kingdom, and also testifying his testimony, you know, how he met Christ Jesus and the things that happened and the things that he was taught while he was in his presence. So then chapter two, it goes on to say that I determined that this with myself, that I would not come again to you in heaviness. For if I make you sorry, who is he then that makes me glad? but the same which is made sorry by me. And I wrote the same unto you, lest when I came I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice, having confidence in you all that my joy is the joy of you all. Now see how he said at the beginning of this uh, verse 3, he says, I, I wrote this same unto you, letting us know that this is a letter, that this is something that he has written to the, uh, the people, those that are saints in Corinth, the city of Corinth in Greece, where he is at and he is right, he has written a letter to them. So he goes on to say, therefore, out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, but not that you should be grieved, but that you might know the love which I have more abundantly for you. Okay, so he's, you know, even though he's going through what he's going through, he still wants to edify the church. He still wants to bring uh, encouragement to the new saints that have come into the kingdom. And he says, but if any have caused grief, he have not grieved me, but in part that I may not overcharge you all. So sufficient to such a man is this punishment, which was inflicted of many, so that contrary wise, you ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Okay, and that's just, he's giving them knowledge regarding any individual that is among the disciples that brings grief one to another somehow in uh, any type of way and how that, even if they do, that there should be forgiveness among them. As the Heavenly Father has decreed and declared, in the kingdom we are to love one another and have forgiveness for one another. And uh, so he goes on to say, so they're contrary wise, you ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with over, over much sorrow, okay? So wherefore I beseech you that you will confirm your love toward him. For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether you be obedient in all things, and that is one thing God told us to do, again, as I stated, but to love one another in the kingdom. He says, to whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And furthermore, because the Heavenly Father has decreed and declared, he has, not, he has made us aware so that we would not, he would, does not want us to be ignorant to Satan's devices. So therefore he gives us discernment and we can continually ask him so that we won't be deceived as and, um, you know, not know what Satan is up to. So he uh, goes on to say, Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and the door was opened unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit, because I found not Titus, my brother. But taking my leave of them, I went from there into Macedonia. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and making manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place, for we are unto God a sweet Savior of Christ. Hallelujah. Now listen to what he says. Because he's just talking in this letter, uh, testifying and just uh, speaking of his experience in the kingdom. And as he has went forward evangelizing, he sent this letter to them in reference to that. So, but he makes this statement right here. He says, for we are unto God a sweet Savior of Christ. And them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the Savior of death unto death, and to the other the Savior of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? 
for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. Okay, so that's just letting us know. All right, so what Christ, uh, what Paul says here in the last verse, verse 17, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, okay? Sincerity, standing on the faith of the holy word of God, God's mouth, but as of God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ Jesus. Everything is from Christ because we have been birthed into the kingdom of God, okay? Through by the power of Christ being our Savior. Now, what I want to do is take us over into the book of Acts chapter 9. And we're going there just to take a look at uh, Paul's testimony. It's very powerful and significant to this chapter we just read in reference to him. Just basically going over some things to the uh, saints in Corinth about his own life and his own walk in the kingdom as he sojourned on the pathway of evangelism. Okay, so here, chapter 9, book of Acts, it says, Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, he went unto the high priest. Now that's Saul, because if you haven't heard, Saul's, Paul's name was Saul, but it was changed to Paul, and we're going to read that. As we read here, it says, and he desired letters of Damascus to the synagogues, that if he, he found any on this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them and, and put them in captivity, okay, and bring them unto Jerusalem in, in bondage. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. So here Paul was getting ready and looking for certain saints that he could actually put in prison himself, okay? Before he had this light shine and he has this come to Jesus Christ moment, okay, and um, he has that moment with Jesus, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? And he said, Why art thou? Who art thou, O Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks, and he began to tremble and he astonished and he said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city and it shall be told what you must do once you get there. Okay, so that was his come to Jesus moment. That was the moment Paul came to Jesus, came into the kingdom of God. He went from being a, out of the kingdom into, into the kingdom when he met Christ Jesus. Now, of course, he had to be baptized and uh with the water and the spirit as Christ tells us to do he had to have that experience but that was his first meeting that he had and it says here that prior to having that meeting he would actually beat down the saints of God and therefore that's what persuaded or that's what uh, no doubt well, because he was already predestined to be a part of the king but the, the encounter with him and Christ Jesus was specific to the fact that he was persecuting Christ. He was beating down Christ, as with some people today, unfortunately, outside of the kingdom, they uh, and those inside the kingdom are experiencing the beat down from those that are outside of the kingdom, those Saul-like people. Oh, hallelujah, Heavenly Father, and we want to petition heaven right now on behalf of those Saul-like individuals that are walking the face of the earth currently, that the Heavenly Father has decreed and decreed that they are predestined for the kingdom of God, but they don't know they are predestined for the kingdom of God. And unfortunately, they are beating down the saints of God in the kingdom. They are stoning them, not even knowing who they are and not even knowing who they are themselves. Oh my God. So we are praying and petitioning heaven today, oh heavenly father, in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, we are petitioning you for you to show up in their lives just like you showed up in the life of Saul and have for them to have a come to Jesus Christ moment because that's the moment Saul had right here when he had a come to Christ moment and that's who we're praying for those outside the kingdom that are behaving just as Saul was behaving here we're praying and petitioning you heaven on behalf of those individuals because they belong to you anyway but we're praying for you to 
send forth angels, send forth those out into for to meet those people and to call them into the kingdom, to let them know that they are a part of your kingdom, Heavenly Father, for them to have that come to Christ moment. Sometimes it takes a close encounter with Christ, okay? Uh, to be to persuade a person because and sometimes you know depending upon the behavior of the person that's what it calls for because again he was beating down the saints of God and father of heaven has decreed and declared touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm okay but and if you do that's a command okay let me just make sure we understand the clarity of what that is so, so there are some things that the heavenly father has said in his word is a declaration that is something he is a decree which means if there is a um, something done, like if there was someone who bothers the prophet, then there's going to be a repercussion on behalf of that, okay? Because God has decreed, he has said out of his mouth to not do that, okay? Now, there are some things he says, keep my commandments, okay? Those are commandments that he gave, but a decree and a declaration is something totally different, <laughs> Hallelujah. It is. And I'm telling you, I've seen it in action. So we've, um, yes, got to pay close attention to that. So uh, going on, he says, still in uh, the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 7, he says, And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man, and saw a rose from the earth. And when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said to Ananias, Arise and go into the street, which is called straight. Okay? He tells him, he says, go to, he said, arise and go to meet this individual. And as he gets there, the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the street, which is called straight, and inquire in the house of, of Judas for one called Saul. Okay. And Tarsus, for behold, he prayed. So Saul was in this house praying. And the Lord has said for uh, this Ananias to go because he's been praying and he's waiting for you to get there. Okay, because God has already had him come to Jesus moment with him. He had a counter with him and he knows that you're on the way to come to meet him. So we see here how the connection through the power of the Holy Spirit was arranged by God in order for uh, Paul to meet another individual who was a part of the kingdom. Because he says here, verse 12, and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Okay, because Paul had uh, lost his sight uh, during the uh, process of him uh, meeting Christ, after meeting him, actually. He had fell down on the ground and he lost his sight for three days. Okay, but this man Ananias was going to lay hands on him and he was going to receive his sight again. Let me see. I'm skipping around verses too. I should tell you that. So uh, verse 15 says, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. So that's the verse we wanted to get to, uh, to actually, uh, for the revelation that we're having a reference to him being a chosen vessel. And how at first he didn't, he was not aware that he was a chosen vessel. He was doing things that he should not have been doing. He was killing the kingdom of God, okay? But he had a come to Jesus Christ moment. And uh, again, we put that petition to heaven for the heavenly father to move mightily in the kingdom, in the earth, for those individuals that are going about in the earth, killing and beating and stoning and doing mean things to those in the kingdom of God. They are saints and they don't even know it, that they have, they themselves are predestined to be a part of the kingdom that they are beating down. Okay. More or less, because that's what it was. All right. So that is the end of uh, this Bible study, second Corinthians chapter two. God bless you. God be with you. And I will see you as we continue to go forward here on the Feet My Sheep Foundation. I'll see you on our next Bible study video.